Hello and welcome to the Abbey Church, where we have a shiny new organ that we're very pleased with and which I'm going to demonstrate to you today. We're going to start with what you would think is the heart of this sort of organ, it's the swell. Starting with the very soft string stops and moving up in volume. Let me pause there, show you the oboe stop. Here we go. On comes the mixture. And the trumpet. With the beautiful contra fagotto under there. And here's full swell. Here's a bit more of that Contra Fagotto because it's such a good stop. Here's something you don't get on every organ, but you get it on Walker organs, and it's a, a, a feature not to be missed. It's the Vox Humana. The other division of the organ that is mostly as Walker's left it back in the day is the choir. It's enclosed and we're a bit spoiled here because there's a set of strings on the choir. Here's the Dulciana on its own. And then there's a Vox Angelica to couple with it. and a beautiful Lieblich. A bit of history attaches to this because the slider failed on this stop a long time ago. For months, years, it didn't work at all. And one of the joys of having the organ rebuilt is that little gems such as this can now be enjoyed in all their glory. Even more history attaches to the four-foot flute. It's of the chimneyed sort of pipe, and there was a lot of speculation over the years as to the provenance of this pipe, clearly older than the rest of the organ, possibly by George Pike England, possibly as old as the 18th century. Nobody was quite sure. And then during the last rebuild, Manda Organ spotted the words Exeter Hall on one of the pipes. The Exeter Hall stood in the Strand. Lots of things uh, went on there. The YMCA was founded there. The anti-slavery movement had a spiritual home there. Concerts went on there, including the first London performance of Elijah, Mendelssohn's Oratorio Elijah, conducted by Mendelssohn. And I think I know why a rank of pipes from the Exeter Hall organ ended up here. One of my predecessors in the 19th century was William Cummings, a very great fan of Mendelssohn, who was in that performance of Elijah, who was singing so enthusiastically as a young man that Mendelssohn singled him out. Who is that young man singing so wonderfully? It was Mr. Cummings who first spotted that this tune by Mendelssohn would fit nicely with a certain Christmas carol text.
that Christmas Carol was born here. And so in memory of Cummings, I suppose, we have a beautiful chimney flute from the old Exeter Hall organ. So here's the build-up, such as it is, on the choir. That's as far as the chorus goes, really. We're now into colour stops. Here's the flutes eight and four. Eight and two. Eight, four and two. Here's the Nazard. Here's the complete cornet, uh, the five characteristic stops of the cornet sound. And now some more characteristic walker features, the orchestral oboe. And the clarinet. Our big read on this organ is a trumba. It's one of those ranks that is hybrid. It's dual purpose. It can be used either as a big chorus read or a modest size solo read. Here's the trumba. The trumba, by the way, is extended in the pedal, so it's shared, it has some shared pipes with the trombone stop. When this organ was being rebuilt, we were given a nice surprise because space had been very, very tight and we were quite worried about it. The organ designers were worried about space. But during the project, it became clear that there was room, after all, for this. An extra rank of pipes right at the bottom of the compass to create a 32-foot reed stop. Here it is in slightly more appropriate context with some other registers. On the great organ, we have the lovely liquid quality Walker flutes. Here's the eight foot. and the forefoot on its own for a minute. And the two together. I'm going to take you straight to the trumpet because that's a survivor from the previous incarnation of the organ. Unusually for an English organ, it sounds like this. bright and brassy. 
a bit of a surprise in context of this Walker organ, but it works well and it's wonderful in a French style, reedy, grand jeu combination. So now to the main great chorus, all of which is new by Manda at the last rebuild. We're particularly pleased with it because by having a whole new chorus, we were also able to have a whole new set of front pipes for the organ, quite a transformation from what was there before. Let me take you through them. The small diapason is actually a Geigen toned diapason, so stringy, particularly as you go up the compass. Here it is. Here's the big diapason, deliberately a notch bigger in scale than the swell diapason, which is already big. In fact, I'll show you them for comparison. Here's the swell diapason. Here's the great number one. Add the principal. Add the 15th. And add the 12th and the double diapason together. And here's the mixture and it's a matter of taste, but when I draw the mixture on this organ, I think it sounds happiest with both diapasons underneath it. So here's the full great chorus. It's an important development is our new chorus because it means that playing early music, playing Bach, for instance, is once again a pleasure on an organ that you wouldn't expect to lend itself to that sort of music. Most of the pedal organ is old Walker and, as you'd expect from this sort of organ, a lot of it's extended. That is to say the pipes of 16 foot stop, 8 foot stop, 4 foot stop of similar power and timbre are, the pipes are shared across them. So here's the board on unit. Here's the principle. The bottom octave is, we think, the original large diapason from the great, from back in the day, from back in the 19th century. We have a cracking open wood. I'll show you individual notes. Let's hope that you can hear them. On the day of this filming, sadly, the organ's covered in plastic sheeting to make sure that the organ doesn't get covered in water while the roof is leaking. And there the 16-foot stops, but one day when I was looking around inside the organ with a, an organ builder tendering for the rebuild, I was counting the pipes thinking, OK, what's where in this organ? And I realised that there was another octave of these open wood pipes, more than was expected, more than you'd think based on what stops there were on the console. And 
at the rebuild, just because the pipes were there, I decided let's have the eight foot extension reconnected. You don't use it very much, but it's quite useful um, when you want to do a pizzicato bass line. There's a violoni that's a bit of a misnomer. It's simply the great double diapason extended. There's a dulciana. That was put there at my wish because the choir dulciana was once upon a time extended into a 16-foot octave. And at the rebuild, Manders wanted to put it back onto the normal soundboard, get rid of the extend extension. But I particularly wanted to retain the pedal 16-foot dulciana, give it a bit of clarity. And so they kept the bottom octave extension and then made new pipes for the rest of it. Oops, that one's got some water in it. So, what's it like altogether? Here we go.